Alright, so if you're here, I'm assuming you're tired of Microsoft's crap with uh, installing a bunch of apps and like ads and stuff in the file system and just all that. And what I have here is a very clean installation of Windows. You'll see there's no suggested apps and there's no Candy Crush or any of those apps that Microsoft just decides to install for you. There's none of that. I don't have any live tiles. I don't have this notification center that's completely useless. There's no Cortana. You can see here. There is no OneDrive that's completely disabled. Um, also, the the system will not just update your drivers even though they don't need updating. Let's see, Windows Update is actually fixed where uh, it'll only install security updates, I think. I can't remember what exactly I did to it. Oh, by the way, Cortana says it's here, but it's not. It just redirects you to search. It's disabled. And uh, what else? What else is there? It's basically, if you know what Windows 10 LTSB is, th this is pretty much as close as you can get to that without actually having it. LTSB is like the version that they they make for use of like in ATMs or like mission critical equipment, maybe medical equipment, stuff that doesn't need to mess up. So it doesn't have much features, but it's extremely stable. A lot of people want that because it's it, it doesn't have all the crap. But this this is the basically the consumer version of that. But this I'll be straight up with you, it's not for people who don't know what they're doing in terms of like if you have never installed Windows on a machine, it's probably not for you. It's not hard, but it's just not it's not like simply straightforward. So starting I'm going to give you the prerequisites. You're going to either need two computers and w one flash drive or one flash drive and two computers. The reason for that is you're going to need a flash drive to actually install Windows and you're going to need a flash drive to have a few files that we need on first boot. The reason we need a flash drive with stuff on it is because when we first boot our new Windows installation, we're not going to have internet. We're going to have the network disabled completely. And that's so Windows doesn't like start installing all this stuff as soon as it like grabs the internet. Because that's what it'll do. It'll start installing all those apps. It'll start finding drivers that it doesn't need to find and all that stuff. So obviously you know you're gonna need your Windows install USB you can use that making the media creation tool you wanna just uh, just go right here download tool now and you can it's straightforward you just make a USB with a Windows install then on your other flash drive or you can do this later with another computer if you want, you know, like you can reformat your Windows install drive and then use it to put these things on that that new install, but you're going to need first and foremost any drivers that you actually just have to have on the first boot. I had a graphics driver because I didn't want to do all this in like I don't know, whatever that resolution is that it defaults to. It's like VGA something. And then the the thing that we're going to use to disable the the app downloading and the drivers and fixing Windows Update and Cortana and all that is called Win Arrow Tweaker. Now this app it's it's a collection of tweaks such as registry tweaks and uh, is it system policy account policy I don't know I can't remember exactly what that term is but it's a bunch of tweaks if you want if you don't trust this program you can google how to do each individual thing 
and you know you can do all this manually but this is just far easier i've never heard of anyone having any problems with it in terms of like malicious stuff so i i, I trust the program pretty well so those are the things that you need on your flash drive so at this point what you would do is you would reboot you would install windows you know like a fresh clean install and then before you boot up the first time disable your network like unplug your ethernet if you have a desktop if you have wi-fi i'd recommend just like disabling your wi-fi router for like the duration that you're doing this because or unless you have a password protected you know just make sure it can't automatically connect to the network because it'll make your life hard it's gonna suck if it does that because you, you just kind of wasted some time if it just connects to the internet so at this point I'm assuming you've just booted into Windows it's gone through that initial setup I mean it's gone <coughs> through the initial installation when you're going through the part where it gives you the option to like turn off analytics and all that you know just turn off whatever you want however you want to set that up don't try to log into a Microsoft account just make a local account since you don't have internet it wouldn't work anyways and then once you get booted into your desktop you'll see something that looks a little bit like this and look a little bit different because you won't have stuff installed yet and the first thing you're going to do is obviously install any drivers that you absolutely have to have and then I guess reboot whatever you need to do and then you're going to run a WinArrow tweaker if you do this this is like an install file it'll uh, it'll install itself you can have it as a portable program so it's all contained within a folder or you can just install it to the system it's whatever you want to do uh, it's nothing that you need to have installed on like in program files but I just keep it because I, I mess with it every now and then but this is what the program looks like pretty simple straightforward it's got a list of a bunch of stuff you can do on this side and then you know options for each one so what we're gonna do again making sure we still don't have internet is uh, just go through all these one of the more important ones is this one ads and unwanted apps just go ahead and click this so that all of them are checked <clears throat> this is what keeps um, most of the annoying things in Windows at bay like and there every now and then there would be like a OneDrive ad in here it gets rid of that <clears throat> it gets rid of most of the annoying app things that that Windows does <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go through these slowly so that I don't miss anything because I've already done them but uh I would disable automatic maintenance uh, that that's like well it tells you what it is the only thing I'm not sure if this disables like defragmentation and trim if you have an SSD I don't know if it does that if it does you might want to like set something like that up uh, separately Let's see here driver updates I would turn that off I've had issues in the past I have this this thing in the front of my computer it it sets in what is supposed to be a CD drive bay but it's it's just a bunch of USB ports and SD card reader and stuff and of course it has it has drivers you can download for it but it if you just plug it in it just works but what Windows Update tends to do is every few weeks it'll like try to download drivers for it and it just makes it stop working so this fixes stuff like that so Windows won't just automatically update all your drivers for no reason uh, let's see here there's an option to disable that weird smiley thing on a blue screen if you want the actual details of it I like that 
Let's see, what do we got here? Action Center. There's a, yeah, Disable Action Center. That's this thing down here that like comes out. It's like a notification center on a phone or something. I don't know why you need that on a desktop. It's like pretty awful in Windows 10 anyways. So yeah, I disabled that. You can disable live tiles. That's where if you have the tiles here and they like flip and show you weather and all that, you can disable those so that they're just static. Uh, hmm, what else? Or what did I do? There's an option to make make those old tool tips that kind of come up here. They're just like a little white window that slowly fades out. You can make those come up instead of those weird notifications that gets in the way of everything here. That's here somewhere. Uh, but basically what I would do, what I did is just go through each and every one, read what they do. If you need it, enable it. If you don't, you know, do what you need to do. This one, auto update of store apps, make sure you disable that. Cause that's uh, that's a biggie. <coughs> you notice when Windows first boots, you'll have these tiles here. It's like a little download button. That means it's gonna automatically download an app there as soon as it gets internet. This will kind of stop that. That in that first option I showed you. You can disable Cortana, which I highly recommend because Cortana is I, I don't know, useless to me. Disable Ink Workspace, I did that. I have a stylus, uh, like a graphics tablet, and this is just very annoying when you have a graphics tablet. It's supposed to be useful, I don't know. It's not for me. Disable Telemetry, that's uh, probably a good option there. So uh, get rid of a little bit more tracking. And you can also have the option to get your classic apps back, some of them. If you want those, you can go ahead and do that. But that's the gist of most of the stuff we're doing. At this point, you can you can connect to the internet, and uh, you'll still have those download buttons in here, but you can just unpin them from the start, and they won't do anything anymore. One thing I noticed after doing this is eventually some it, it showed a recommended app like from the store or something and what I did to fix that is if you go in here to I think notifications uh, where is it system <clears throat> Sorry, this is a uh, not a scripted video. Oh, I know where it is. It's with the the taskbar. Start. Occasionally, so it shows suggestions and start. It'll be off. Turn it on and then back off. That'll fix the problem if it shows like a recommended app in here from the store. Uh, next, there is OneDrive. It, it shows up in here. If you don't use OneDrive, that's extremely annoying. Or at least it is for me. First step in disabling that would be to go down here. OneDrive will be running. Right click on it and then there's like settings or preferences or something uh, you can either uncheck uh, the option to start at Windows login or you can just go and uninstall it <clears throat> now after that you have to run a registry tweak to remove that from the sidebar here I'll have that in the description. It, it'll be a link to how to do that. It's very simple, but you just run the registry editor 
and then you go and change this. I didn't know that was still open, to be honest. But yeah, I'll, I'll have that in the description. Change it from a 1 to a 0. And then uh, you've got your search options. You now you can you can make the taskbar a little bit cleaner right there. You can disable the people button. If, you, if you're going for a hardcore like Windows 7 kind of kind of deal you got those options you can make it cleaner I don't have any live tiles or or pin stuff to start because I, I I don't know I just don't I don't like the way it looks you can get an app called uh, classic shell if you really want the Windows 7 start menu you it'll give you that if you just really hate this Windows 10 version. So there's that. Basically, that's that's about it. I hope that this is helpful to someone. I'll have this all in writing eventually on my blog for for Medium. Well on Medium, the website. I'll have a link to that in the description as well. Whenever it comes out, it could be a while, I don't know. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck with decrapifying your Windows 10 installation, and I'll see you in the next video.